Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can start now. Okay. Uh, Jai Shri Mataji. Jai Shri we welcome. Mataji. Jai Shri Mataji. We welcome all the Sars Yogis in this new episode of Experience with the Divine, Part 12. Today we have with us Lisa Baranti from Australia. So, Lisa Aunty, we welcome you. Jai Shri Mataji. Jai Shri Mataji, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Aunty, I would like to tell you about uh, this activity of uh, ours, our collective. It is exciting. So, in this activity, actually, uh, all the yoga says yogis who have been with Shri Mataji, they, they share the experience with us. And so, we all, the collectivity, get to know the experience. And we feel a lot of joy and uh, happiness and a lot of vibrations when we listen to the experiences of other yogis. So today we have uh, invited you for this and we are really happy that you have uh, joined with us to ex share your experience with us. So, Auntie, I would like to uh, ask you to give you a brief introduction of yourself so that all our yogis will know better about you. Thank you. I'm very humbled and very grateful to be a part of this. I grew up in a little village in Redhead, which is in Newcastle, east coast of Australia. Okay. I, um, my, I became a primary school teacher and really loved and enjoyed my job. And I came to Sahaj around 31 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I was blessed because from a young age I, I knew about God because mm -hmm. I was born deformed and I was not meant to walk. However, okay. my grandmother had such a deep, deep belief that she prayed and prayed and miraculously I walked. Achha. Okay, so the spiritual base was there right from the beginning. It was, but then it got lost. <laughs> it definitely Achha. got lost as I grew older, yes. Yeah, uh, Lisa, auntie, we would like to know, how did you come to Sars Yoga first? Well, I lived a lifestyle that every Australian was meant to be happy with. I'm 63, so I'm talking about the 80s. And it was one of, you know, music and and going to the beach and drinking alcohol and having parties. But because of my spiritual basis as a child, mm. I began to feel something was really missing. And okay. I started telling my friends I wasn't satisfied with this and that my spirit did not have a home. And then mm. it was through a friend who had no interest in Sahaja Yoga showing me a newspaper advertisement. Mm. and. That's how I came to Sahaja Yoga and a dream as well that I was not going to go to the program, but I had a very strong dream in which I knew I just had to go. So that's how I came to Sahaja Yoga. Acha, this was in uh, which year? Oh, 1990. Okay. So from that, I mean, from that was the beginning of your Sahaja Yoga journey. That was was the beginning yes and from the minute I walk in I, I honestly was skeptical but okay. then I I did as soon as Sri Mataji said keep an open mind like a scientist hmm. I just thought this is the truth because no one would say that and okay. so I stayed and the experience was so strong that I left forgetting completely about my my old lifestyle in in a, in an instant, it was forgotten. Yeah, gotcha. so no more drinking, no more smoking, just the joy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is your thought or concept about God before you came to Sahaj Yoga? Before I came to Sahaj Yoga, as a as a child, I was lucky that I had an amazing grandmother that taught me that there were three parts to God. There was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, okay. and 
she explained that God was like a telephone. Mm. Jesus was the headphone that you spoke into in those days and the Holy Spirit connected. So, But then when I became so disillusioned with life, I yeah. forgot about God completely and, and I began to feel very negative until, as I said, I realised something was really lacking in my life. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but that time you had done any other options uh, apart from Sahaja Yoga, like you, uh, were you gone into anything else? Yes. Uh, any other spiritual way where it yes. was not, because Sahaja Yoga is the main truth. So, you had gone yeah. to uh, something else also? No, I I was raised I was raised as a Catholic, okay. and so then I had a deep devotion to Mother Mary. That's but then sure. when I realised how hypocritical our parish priest was, okay, I I stopped going when I was about sixteen, and then I didn't do anything. I I still, for a short time, prayed to Mother Mary, but okay. I gave up everything and until. I, I was really blessed because I didn't get caught up trying anything until I mm. I came to the Sahaja Yoga program. Okay, so so this was the first only like you are you was blessed to have Shri first in your life. Yeah, I in did. this part of the journey. Yeah, yeah, as an adult, yes, I was I blessed can't. to have just Shri Mataji. Okay, because that is actually biggest blessing which we. Feel so it's it's go it becomes easier for us to go deeper in Sahaja yoga, right? It does, and I also had an experience when I was a teenager where I I used to want to save the world. That was my little egotistical feeling and as a young person. And so one day on television, it was late at night actually, and I couldn't sleep, and I put on the TV, and he was this amazing woman. Hmm. dressed in what I later knew was a sari, telling me yeah. it was going to be easy to save the planet. And that ended up being Sri Mataji. So I was so, so blessed. Wow. So blessed. Because you're, you're, you also had the same thought in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So God is born with you for in this little. Uh, okay, and then after, once you came in Sahaja Yoga, then after how was it your your journey, how it was? Like what challenges did you face uh, uh, around you, your relatives, your friends? Like what was their reaction when you stopped all those previous activities and you were into the path of this spiritual journey? How 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 you started with and how you coped up with the situation around you? Well, my friends left. Some tried to come to Sahaja Yoga. But okay. were not really obviously they weren't seekers because they they didn't feel anything they didn't they saw it as a cult so I lost most of my friends but mm. my family my parents they were so overjoyed because I'd given up drinking and going out and partying and I'd become a more because at this time I was in my thirties and I was also. My marriage had failed, and I had a had a young daughter to raise. So, okay. mum and dad were so grateful that I'd come to Sahaja Yoga. They didn't really question it. And then, when Sri Mataji came to Newcastle, my mother was with me, and she actually we knelt before Sri Mataji together. And and then Sri Mataji did a really interesting thing, as she does always. I, I was removed from that environment and given a permanent job teaching in a small country town. So mm-hmm. that enabled me to start there fresh as I'm a Sahaja Yogi. I, okay. I didn't have to have to deal with, I could make different friends. Yeah. Acha, so you were among the other Sahaja Yogis? No, that was, <laughs> that was the amazing part. In Newcastle, there were only a few Sahaja Yogis. And okay. the biggest collective was in Sydney, and that was two hours' journey, roughly, by car. So we okay. would go there every weekend. But when I Achoo. started this job, there was no no um, collective there. So, Achoo. so you 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 yeah. and your I mean, you were the only one who was meditating in that small town. Yeah, but 
Yeah, and I did, Trimadji came to Newcastle prior to me getting the job. So I've, for a short amount of time, my friends were the yogis that lived in Newcastle. And okay. then when I moved to Newcastle, um, to the little country town, we all the yogis from Sydney came and we had a public program. And then I, I started a little collective in that town. Okay. But it was hard, yeah. Shumata, you had come for the public program over there? No, not not to the small town. But okay. in Newcastle, she came twice. And, okay. and that was, that's yeah, that was absolutely amazing because that was my hometown. And mm. to think that, you know, God came <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to my little country, well, yeah. the city now, it was just... Amazing! It was amazing. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Okay. So from that time, you, your daughter, and your parents, you all all started doing Sahaja Yoga. <laughs> no, my daughter and I did for mum okay. and dad because of their Catholic upbringing and conditioning. They Achoo. didn't, but they all got their self realization. And as I said, mum came along to the public program with Shri, where Sri Mataji appeared in Newcastle. Okay. But no, but, but they they were, when, sometimes they joined me with a little puja at home, which was really okay. sweet. And they gotcha. knew who Sri Mataji was. Because uh -huh. so many miracles, so many. And so they had no doubt who Sri Mataji was. Okay. Yeah, so I was blessed. Acha. Um, what was the first thought when it came in your mind or in your heart, you know, when you feel, when you saw Shimataji first? Because everyone's experience, when they see Shimataji at the first sight, the first, you know, look, you know, if for everyone it's different. So what was yes. your experience when you saw Shimataji at the first look, you know, of mother? I first saw Shimataji in the airport and it was really stuffy. And I remember just feeling this wonderful, cool breeze coming closer. And <laughs> she stood in front of me and there was no thought. In my head, I wanted to thank her for coming because I'd craved for God to come in my lifetime for the second coming. I had always mm. wanted to be one of those children of Fatima, like in the Catholic religion where Mary appears. And so in my mm. head, I had all these things to say. And mm -hmm. I, she came in front of me to take a rose and I okay. couldn't speak, nothing. I just felt Speechless. immense love, no thoughts <laughs> and, and just her smile. And mm. then she thanked me and then moved on. And all I could think was afterwards was, I wanted to thank her, but she thanked me. I, I was just, and I cried because it was, and then I realized that, that she knew anyway. I, I didn't have to speak, but it was yes. just. It just was a glance and she knows everything. Yeah, and it was like, oh, I wanted, yeah. And then years later you go, well, that was ego, wasn't it? All these things <laughs> you wanted to say, but oh, I'll never, ever forget. That's the most, even talking about it, such strong vibrations. and Yes. Yeah. That's what the first uh, look and the first glance of our uh, our Shemataji, that, you know, my, any, how many years passed out, that, that thing never goes from your oh. heart. <laughs> Still, it oh. comes lively in front of you. It does. It does, literally. And she was so close to me. And now I realize what a blessing that was to be able to actually hand a rose to the Adi Shakti is just, it's yeah. very, it just makes you feel like you're a little ant. <laughs> so uh, humbling. Yes. Um, tell us more about the journey and then again how, like, uh, then uh, uh, after you met Sri Mataji, then after that what was the difference and how the journey of yours started? More deeper, anything? Everything changed for me, everything. I, I I used to say I couldn't remember when I, I last laughed and then suddenly I was filled with joy and I felt that I'd finally become who I was meant to be and 
I felt a lot more relaxed as a human and I felt so much love from the collective because we were all hmm. growing. And I did, at the time, I, um, I had corrective surgery on my legs and then it was, my, my prognosis didn't go so well for me as an adult because I was facing becoming a crippled in a wheelchair. So I had to wear orthotics and special shoes. So, okay. you know, so many things. She just changed everything. The fact that I got, a, I'll go back to that story because it's a miracle story. But, I mean, I, I'd wanted a permanent job teaching for so long. It was meant to be impossible to get that job. But okay. I, got, I got it exactly where I wanted. Everything in my life changed. And mm. my devotion to Sri Mataji was just, I really felt her with me. All the time, every second, as I do yeah. today, every second. And it didn't matter. Because of where I lived and my circumstances, I couldn't go to every puja or travel oh. the world to pujas. Hmm. But I, I had such strong experiences with her. And, of course, when you're blessed to get with the collective, then they're even stronger but or as strong, I'll say. Yeah. Yeah, she okay. just changed everything. She'd come in dreams and tell me not to worry about money and then money would unexpectedly appear. She just did so, so much. And and when my mother and I knelt before Sri Mataji, mum yes. had been rather abusive to me as a child. Yes. And we were kneeling in front of mother and she took my hand, Sri Mataji hmm. took my left hand and yes. began stroking especially the left heart finger okay. and then she just said to me so this is your mother and I said yes and then she mm. said look into her eyes and see the light she mm. feels it and in that moment I saw yeah. my mother as an innocent scared child and in that instant I realized that mother let me see who my mother really was that she was doing the best she could, no matter what. She was doing the best she could. And in that instant, the relationship between my mother and I completely changed. Oh. So to try and express what changed in my life after coming to Sahaja Yoga, it, it's so overwhelming. But if I had to say one thing, it was mm -hmm. truly, truly oh, just really being... All problems taken away, completely transformed. And if I did have problems, I mm. always thought mother was there. Mm. Okay. Um, when to, uh, you came to India, and, uh, what you, uh, what did you hear about India first? And then how when you came to India and your experience when you came to India? Oh, well, I didn't... I knew, of course, I just knew what the media told me about India growing up. So I knew that it has absolutely beautiful art and I loved Indian music, but I considered it to be, you know, a bit of a poor country, but I always wanted to, to go there and it was the only country I wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. Getting ready for the first India tour, yogis were preparing me because I'd never gone anywhere and okay. I came from a little simple village over here with you know a nine mile stretch of beach and not many people and they were preparing me for this big culture shock and 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 sort of telling me what to expect okay and, and when I arrived I stepped off that into the airport and just felt at home Wow. Absolutely at home. And I had been so anxious about making the flight and I was an anxious type person. And gotcha. in that moment, I truly felt all that leave me and just felt this is my spirit's home. Mm. That was what, and then, I mean, I had a, an incredible experience just even trying to get to India yeah. And I'd seen an Indian doctor and he said to me, I want you, when yeah. you come back, to tell yeah. me what you see in my people's eyes. And I realised what was mm. so beautiful about India 
was that people had the look of satisfaction Mm -hmm. and I never, ever saw any mother or anyone being angry with children, whether they were the beggars (laughs) on the street, nothing. I just never, ever saw that. And (laughs) and I just realised, like, it's of bliss. People ask me, where did we go? I can't really tell you, except for, you know, Dara Doon and um, Missouri and some places, the Yamuna River, Hyderabad. But I was just didn't care whether it was north or south or east or west. It was just... (laughs) You were just enjoying the bliss. (laughs) I did. I did completely. Yeah. So that was how it felt for me. Yeah, because even Shimata ji uh, used to tell that when yogis come in the airport, they when they feel the vibrations, they just bow down to the mother oh. out in India and they do pranam because the land is so much vibrated and it full is. of divine vibrations. All the Ashtavinaika there and the Kundalini Shakti is there. So they, uh, my mother always tell, used to tell no, first that uh, yeah. when yogis come, they bow down to the mother earth at, at the airport. And do pranam. Exactly, exactly. Because it's just like nothing I had ever, ever imagined I could experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you tell us more about your Australian collectivity? Because Australian collectivity, we have heard about the music, music of joys of Australian collectivity, right? Yeah. 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 So anything more about your about your collectivity and how you all practice uh, yoga in the ashrams over there and how the way you all do prachar prasar. Tell us more about it. Well, we're we're very varied. We're very, it's such a big country, so there's many different collectives. Okay. Um, we have probably more than seventy public programs held weekly across the country. Wow, um, music of joy, of course, is toured, but we, you know, I don't even want to say the word COVID, but obviously things have changed in in that way. But mm-hmm. they used to travel to different parts of the world to spread Sahaja Yoga yeah. through yeah. their music, mm-hmm. and many yogis were blessed to go with them. But I can't talk about that experience because I I never could do okay. that. Um, we used they used to play at different events mm-hmm. and then give um, realisation through their music. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, they, they went through the for- formality of giving realisation, but that was after just blasting people with vibrations. Uh, another thing that we I, I was so blessed to be a part of, we did a few programs in Sydney where we invited different community people, such as Aboriginal leaders, um, um leaders of the Muslim community, both men and women, Jewish people, storytellers, Christian leaders. And okay. we would give them a question and so they would all answer it. And and it was good because the Hajj yogis also saw that there was a, a commonality that they had with Sahaja Yoga and with what Sri Mataji wanted for this world because we would ask, how can you become one, for example? But going mm. back to how we spread Sahaja Yoga, there would always mm. be a yogi who would um, present themselves and and give realisation. So that meant that the friends and, and followers of the sheikhs and the Jewish people and that, all the different communities okay. got their realisation. So that was a different way. Um, gotcha. We've got, of course, lots of online courses held weekly, mm. but we're blessed to be able to go back to doing our public programs weekly, so so that's what we do. Um, mm-hmm. There's a Mother for All exhibition that went to it, Italy, I feel. Um, we're going to present that in Sydney at the end of this month. Okay. So we do it in all, and people give it spontaneously with tradespeople that come to the house or someone that you meet. And so individually we've all got different ways of spreading Sahaja Yoga as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, and we have yes. stalls in festivals and we kind of go all out. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we have Shimataji's ashram also, no, in Australia? Yes. Oh, yes. Mother yes. used to come and stay over there? Oh, yes. She used to come and stay 
she stayed in quite a well to Gijigan up and in Sydney. So okay. now there's um, we used to hold our our programs in Sri Mataji's home in Burwood, but now due, for different reasons and the collective haven't grown so much. That's okay. always open for meditation on a Sunday, and we've got a lovely group of yogis from all generations that are living there at the moment. Um, okay. And again, I haven't been blessed to visit all the national ashrams, but there are quite a few in Sydney living collectively, not so much in other... Of course, in the major ashrams, people live collectively, but not so okay. much with just okay. yogis in day-to-day -day life. That hasn't seemed to work out, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, did you travel to other countries for the reason of Sahaja Yoga or uh, for uh, spreading Sahaja Yoga? I only went to Kabbalah for okay. Ganesha Puja and Sarasra Puja. So not so much for spreading, but for my own ascent. Acha. Okay, okay. Um, is there any difference which you feel like uh, when Shimataji was there in Sakar, that time, the, how the Sahaja Yoga and how the yogis used to do, do the Sahaja Yoga and now the new generation, the new yogis who are coming now in Sahaja Yoga, the way they are doing, because you have seen both the this thing in 80s also and now now the new generation also. So anything, yeah. uh, the difference you feel in the Sahaja Yoga practice of those yogis and now the yogis, how they are doing and whatever, or what what is the difference and what you feel that what we should do to uh, be more surrendered, to uh, be more humble and to do Sahaja Yoga in a very, uh, you know, called a surrendering way. Um, when Sri Mataji was with us, of course, it was a much smaller collective and mm. people tended to be much closer to each other because okay. especially for this country, mm. um, the style of how we do Sahaja Yoga, we've of course maintained Sri Mataji's methods and how she she taught us to practice Sahaja Yoga. Okay. But I feel that since Sri Mataji has taken her Mahasamdhi, that um, Samadhi, that maybe we put too much attention on getting more people, mm. and okay. it feels that really we we need to spend more time going deeper and that's beginning to happen with having our Easter seminar, for example. We had a wellness camp mm. where people just got together to meditate and go a lot deeper. Okay. Uh, of course, as I mentioned before, we've got all of these online programs which are truly mm -hmm. a big blessing and especially for seekers. But so many seekers are coming into Sahaja Yoga. Well, mm, hard to tell because we we don't have our. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not in a position to answer that really because I'm a okay. bit removed from where there are many public programs. So I don't know mm. how many people okay. go to those weekly programs from online. But, gotcha. And and the other thing, of course that became so different and distracting, if you ask, you know, what what should we do to go deeper, mm. it would be forget it, forget all the politics, forget all the distractions and just, yeah, just surrender to mother. focus on, yeah, the basic basic teachings of Sri Mataji and don't change, you know. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, Nizanti, uh, can you tell us your routine, daily routine about your Sahaja Yoga? Like, how is your daily routine? How you practice? How I practice? I meditate early in the morning. I listen to a short excerpt of Sri Mataji's talk. Okay. Um, I do some candle treatment. Mm -hmm. I Then later in the day, I do shoe beating. Okay. And then at night, I been really blessed to connect with some yogis from around the world, just a handful of us, probably seven. Okay. So we listen to a talk and 
then nothing but silent meditation, no guided, just silent. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards we we do this on Zoom, so then afterwards we might spend time giving bandans to worldwide um being for the world. Yeah, but and for me personally, one thing that happens every just how can I say this spontaneously hmm. is heartfelt prayers to Sri Mataji, just heartfelt prayers, whether it's gratitude or whether it's for the world. And one thing that I've always done is I remember Sri Mataji saying that our hearts should be open with hmm. pure love so that we can surround this planet. And that's mm. one of, I say that prayer. And of course, I do string burning when I feel the left side. I, I love to get out in Mother Nature just to sit and clear that way. But okay. hard yoga is a lifestyle, isn't it? It's your whole life. It's yeah, everything. Uh, can you, uh, if you don't mind, can you say the prayer here for one second? Like you know, we even we'll sure. be fortunate to hear the prayer. It's very simple. Yeah, but simple goes to God, no? <laughs> That's what. Exactly. I'm simple. <laughs> I just say that, Sri Mataji, please let my heart be open. Let you be completely in my heart. Let my heart be so open that it is filled with the divine love that will encompass this planet. Let me please fulfill this. Let me achieve this. Jai Shri Mataji. Jai Shri Mataji. Even our hearts are open when you said the prayer. <laughs> okay. Um, give us some information about the book which you're writing. Well, I've, I've finished one book. and Okay. And I'm working on my new book, which is, it's about miracles and it's aimed at seekers and now I also realise it's important for the next generation of yogis, our users. Okay. And because Sri Mataji's just blessed me with the most practical miracles that, mm. that and and that's what I'd love people to, to know, that they're everyday things that, that can happen. So hmm. that's one book that I'm working on. The other one I wrote, I called it The Tata of Life. Okay. And the word tata in English can mean a ragged piece of cloth. And as I referred to my earlier lifestyle, hmm. my mother would always tell me, your life is going to end in tatters. Hmm. And... Then when I came to Sahaj Yoga and after being on India tour and I realized that all of that mess, all of those twists and turns in my life hmm. were all being guided by Sri Mataji even before I knew her. And when you okay. rise above all that, hmm. the word Tata also means a person who makes lace. Okay. So I saw it as that's why I chose the title. So it goes from childhood and it ends sitting on the beach in Ganapadapule and it takes the reader through mm-hmm. all these little experiences that I had that seemed significant growing up and going through my life, but I didn't know why. And and then finding Sri Mataji. So the aim of the book too was for... And a reader to mm. hear the, the Shri Mat, like to see a photograph of Sri Mataji, I say okay. who she is in the book, and then possibly get their realization through reading the book and maybe follow up on Sahaj Yoga. Okay. And so far I've had one success story, <laughs> but it's, okay. hard. it's hard to promote the book, I find. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they're the two. Uh, what else? Some miracles are uh, about Sahaja Yoga. What miracles you have, uh-huh. you have experienced? 
The miracle in mother's presence would be what happened between my mother and I. But going back to the story of my, my legs, huh. when I came to Sahaja Yoga, I was wearing like orthotics and orthopedic shoes. Hmm. And it was, my life was going to be a wheelchair, you know. And just before going on India tour, I slipped and I, I fell and I fractured it. So it was really annoying because I was trying to get ready to go to India. And luckily, hmm. I, my doctor that wanted to stop it all left town. And mother sent an Indian angel and he understood and he <laughs> said, you know, yes, you can still go. We won't plaster it. Okay. And then I and then I just prayed to Shrimadji, please, this is so difficult. And I had a dream. And in the dream, Shrimadji, mm. we were all on the Ganges River with my mother, my physical mother, and Shrimadji mm. came and called me away. And mm. she said, I'll show you what's wrong with your ankle. And in the dream, it was a black spot on my ankle. And so she would massage it and oh. then she would get me to follow with my hand and we kept doing that together okay. until the black spot left huh. and when I woke up in the morning it was healed completely completely healed wow, no crutches great. no pain so when I went out I went to tell my mother about this wonderful thing mm. and she had she said to me you and Sri Mataji I had the worst sleep she said you disappeared with her and then we realised we'd literally been in the dream together and she couldn't believe the miracle. But then when I got to India, the <laughs> ankle blew up even more and oh. it was very swollen. And this beautiful yogini from Delhi, she mm -hmm. just worked on my ankle using a candle okay. and she did it for a very long time. And this mm. is the absolute truth. When I got up, I couldn't mm. walk in my orthotics or orthopedic shoes because my legs were completely healed. All the congenital problems had left, mm. and that was 30 years ago. And my God. So if you've got more time, I could tell you. You can tell more. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> yes, yes. We would love to hear because it's uh, it's really very precious for us that we are lucky and we are really thankful to Shimataji that we are uh, we are listening this experiences from you. So oh, I mean, I, I, you know, <laughs> we will really love to hear from you more. Okay. Well, when I was getting organised to go <laughs> to go to see Shimataji. Okay. I um, didn't have a lot of money and again, so petrol was a bit of a problem okay. and I just gave it a bandan and I was staying at a yogini's home yeah. before we moved on. I think I was on my way back home, but I, I still had a lot of traveling to do. And I walked out to the car in the morning and there was a puddle of petrol. Now, <laughs> that petrol tank was not full. It hardly had any petrol left and I had <laughs> no money and there was Thank a puddle you. of petrol. And so I looked at it and went, no, how can this be happening? I, Shumanji, I can't lose the petrol. And then I, I, I opened up the tank and I'm not joking, there was a fountain of petrol about 10 centimetres bubbling up out of my Bum. tank. Oh my so god. We put the lid on and I got I, I went to ring NRMA, which is roadside assist. I called my sister to come and and guard the car because it was still dripping petrol even though I moved it in case uh. somebody threw a match. And I showed her the fountain <laughs> of petrol and she could not believe it. And when when the road assist person came, he actually mm. got really angry because mm. he thought I was playing games and I just wasted his time because he he couldn't work it out and every time he took the petrol cap off <laughs> the fountain of petrol would bubble up. So oh my said to God. Me, oh, it's unbelievable no. really. Yeah, yeah, it is. And that's what I mean about practical miracles that as long as you've got absolute faith it can 
anything can happen. And yeah, the divine so can the, do anything. Yeah, anything. And there were a lot of miracles with that poor old car of mine. But one okay. other kind of miracle was I was, I'd written a letter from my heart about why I felt Sri Mataji had come to my hometown for Maha Shivaratri Puja. Okay. And so it wasn't allowed to be put in the newsletter because it was the question of who are you to speak with any authority? So, and I'd written about the environment and all different things. So that was, you know, months before I went on this amazing holiday into the Dane Tree. And the Dane Tree is the world's most ancient rainforest. And okay. Sri Mataji's also been in that area. And I was shoe beating all these environmental problems. No okay. technology, no laptop, nothing. When okay. I went home, that email that I'd written had somehow been sent because when I checked my emails I had emails from Finland London America all over Australia all thanking mm. me for this Love beautiful it. thing about the environment and what we could do and and it had, and I thought oh my goodness that the, the <laughs> leaders didn't even want anyone to read that and and yeah. then I went and looked and mm. I had a photo of the beach when I sh mm -hmm. was doing shoe beating, and mm -hmm. back then no re mobile phones, so it was time stamped and date stamped. And when I looked mm -hmm. at my sent messages, mm -hmm. that email had left at the same time as I'd taken the photos. Wow. It got sent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there's medical miracles with my dad and... There's so many, there's so much, and we're so blessed, and no one is... Can you uh, tell us uh, one medical uh, miracle so that you yeah. know, yogis will well, get the inspiration and their um, bhakti will improve? Okay, so there's a couple, but I'll talk to the one about my father. My father yeah. was um, diagnosed with cancer and mm -hmm. he'd already had one lung removed okay. and he was not sort of in a very good state but mm -hmm. then a hernia appeared and okay. he was meant to have that operated on and it was very risky because they didn't know that he would survive the anesthetic mm -hmm. and the night before the operation was due mm -hmm. another yogi came to my home yeah. And he was in distress about another yogini and her children. And he said, mm -hmm. can we please do a Ganesha puja? Mm -hmm. So we did the Ganesha puja with complete attention on innocence of children mm -hmm. and removing obstacles. Mm -hmm. But nothing to do with my father, nothing. Not one bit of attention was on my father because we truly wanted to offer this to Sri Ganesha for children. Mm, so when good. I went to the hospital, my father just saw me and said, well, what did you get up to last night? And I yeah. said, well, what, what do you mean? And he said, well, the hernia is gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone. He said, they're not going to operate and they don't understand how... <laughs> how it just disappeared. <laughs> and then I realised, oh, we did a puja to Sri Ganesha yeah. and he removes obstacles. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. And another, yeah. And another time he had, um, he, oh, they found him not breathing and they didn't know how long for. Mm. And he was in a really bad way and he was very agitated and he was not conscious. And mm. if he did come into consciousness, he didn't know that anything or who we were or why we were there. Mm. And I was so upset. And then I firmly felt, I am a Sahaj Yogini, mm. act like one. You're not a sad daughter. Act like a Yogini, remember. Mm. So I... 
put my atten- I raised Dad's Kundalini laying there and put on a bandha, mm. and then mm. I sat with my right hand towards the earth and my left hand towards my father and just full attention on him. Mm. And then Mum noticed because his fingers, his hands were clenched in a fist. Mm-hmm. And Mum noticed that his hands straightened and he put his hands out mm-hmm. as if in meditation. Oh. And my mother said to me, you come and sit close. She said, I know what you're doing. You come mm-hmm. and sit close. Mm-hmm. So I sat closer to my father and kept the meditation. Oh. And then Dad woke up and he mm-hmm. literally looked at us and said, why are you here? You know, it's, 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 I said, Dad, do you know what day it is? Of course I know what day it is, he said. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so just that, it's all, never forget that you've got powers that your mother, she gave you, and we've all got them. Yes, yeah. really. Yeah, so, yeah, he came out of that. Okay. And I still have more, but I won't keep talking. <laughs> okay. Uh, one more question. What message would you like to give for the new generation now? For the new generation, to remember that Sahaj Yoga is simple. It is hmm. complete and absolute faith. Mm. in Sri Mataji and meditating with your heart open. And keep that heart open to all humanity because you can achieve anything. You can save this planet, definitely. And Mm. don't get distracted by the politics of the world or anything. Mm. And make your life a puja as in an offering to Sri Mataji every moment of the day, no matter what happens. Mm. And don't listen to what people might say mm. because you, especially the Yuva Shakti in this upcoming generation, mm. you are the most important people in this planet. Mm. You have powers. So have complete and utter faith in yourself Because you are the children of the Adi Shakti. So do your simple Sahaj practices and and that's all it takes and have complete faith. Yeah. Because you're precious. You're the most precious in all the universes, as Sri Mataji has said. When you've got to Yeah. So that would be my message. Yeah. And that I love you all. And <laughs> yeah, even me yeah. too. <laughs> My mother you has given us brothers and sisters all over the world. So we oh. are like one, still one family of children. But that's it. We are. And we're so connected. And yes. we are one. And we are never, one. Never Join forget that. Love. Yes, yeah. connected with mother's love. Exactly. Connected with mother's love. And we're so, so lucky out of all the millions of people in the world and yes, we're the ones sure. that found her. And and the Yuvas, many, I would imagine, have never seen Trimadaji in a physical form, but it doesn't matter because she's yes. everywhere all the time, all yes. the time. Yes. And, and if anything, you're much greater than any senior yogi because you've recognised her and you've come with all of your dyna, dyna, how can't say it, dyna, your dynamic, yeah, and, and all your wonderful creative ideas, and your full attention and dedication. So you are so yeah. important. Yeah, of course you know that, but yeah, yeah, you're doing wonderful things. Yeah, and bhakti yeah. is the most important. Yes, bhakti is very important. Yeah. Bhakti can work out anything and work out miracles. It can. It really yes. can. Yes. It's just, I mean, the things that have happened in my lifetime just to me, and I, I'm sure there's nothing special about me. I didn't get to live in an ashram. I didn't get to live 
with the collective. I couldn't even afford to go to all the pujas. But she still made her presence so strongly felt and blessed me with all of those miracles, I believe, purely, not because I'm special, just because I'll be... I'm I'm simple-minded enough just to share them (laughs) with everybody because and so that people know that she's everywhere and never forget. Yeah. uh, Her attention is there on every kind of stuff, whether you are in the ashram or whether you are any corner of the world anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, She's there. And she shows you in the most beautiful ways, you know? Yes. Yeah. She's truly a mother and she'll surprise you with, you might feel sad and then suddenly you might see, you know, your favourite flower or something (laughs) that only you know means something and she'll suddenly let that be seen or be felt or be heard or... and, And other miracles, like even... Oh, there's so many. <laughs> we, yeah, uh, never mind, you can tell one before. Um, <laughs> Perhaps we would like to hear in, maybe in the second episode also. <laughs> okay. Okay. So like, before you, you can tell one more. Okay. One more jumped into my head with anything is possible. When doing um, the Sahaj program was to be held at my home yeah. and I was traveling and there was the big storm, there were trees down, and I knew I wasn't going to get to the home in time. And I had all my attention on that, wishing that somehow I could let them know because there was no mobile phone. Mm. And I finally got home after the program would have been held. It was so late because trees had blocked the road. And okay. I rang then quickly to it, say, huh? That was, that was the program? The program was going to just be at my house because okay. we used to have, like, take turns with established people just to have a program at okay. home, Okay. at my home. So okay. I raised home because no one would have been there to let them in. Mm-hmm. And I raced home and rang one of the yogis and I said, I'm so, so sorry, I I wasn't there. She said, what are you talking about? She Mm -hmm. said, you rang. You rang and let us know what happened. Mm -hmm. I went, no, I didn't. I was stuck in the the storm. And she said, my, and then she called out, Liam, didn't Auntie Lisa, didn't she ring you and let you, what did she say? Tell her. And then Liam's called out. She said that she was stuck with the storm and she wouldn't be home in time. And I didn't. I was stuck in the car. So they all had a beautiful program (laughs) at someone else's home. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I mean is... Such a great miracle. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Mm. Yeah, lots of them. Yes. Uh, Tusha, would you like to ask something? Oh, nothing. That's really amazing one. And uh, thank you so much uh, for this uh, great, great uh, session. Yes. Uh, Lisa, and even we thank on behalf of all our collectivity and mm-hmm. for sharing your divine experiences with us. And we would really love again for you to come and share with us some more. And uh, all the best more. for I your book. You. All the, the book which you are writing, all the best for that. And I hope you have many more books to be written for us. Our future uh-huh. generation can uh, read those books. You're so, too um, kind. Thanks a lot. And we also thank um, all those who have been a part of this team. And especially Shimataji, thank you for giving us this opportunity to do this activity and blessing us for this. So yes. thank you, Lisa, Auntie. Thank you very much. No, I thank you both. It's very humbling and I thank Sri Mataji for the wonderful experience and for all the wonderful users around the world. So thank you so much and 
it's a joy to share, of course. Yes. I'd love to share more. <laughs> thank you, Sri Madhati, and thank you all. Sending you pure, pure love and the deepest yes. respect for all you do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shri Exactly. Yeah, Shri Yeah.